The apartment of this elderly woman became a topic of much debate in the last few months, because this woman had kept it hidden from the public for over 25 years. Privacy is one thing, but when a nauseating smell started to exit her home, neighbors became worried. They devised a plan to enter her home, and what they found inside was heartbreaking. Her name was Eunice, but most in the neighborhood knew her as Miss Eunice. She was a permanent fixture in the community, living in a narrow four-story apartment building on the corner of West 21st Street. A neighborhood matriarch in every sense of the word, Eunice was the kind of person who could tell you stories about every family that lived on the block, even those who had moved away years ago. She was a living testament to the history of the community, her memory as rich and detailed as the local archives. Despite being in her late 80s, Eunice was an active woman. You could see her most mornings, rain or shine, tending to her well-loved garden in the small patch of ground beside her building. It was not uncommon to see her chatting with the local store owners or stopping to pet a neighborhood dog. She was kind, gentle, a woman of grace and strength that was evident in the lines of her face and the sparkle in her age-dimmed eyes. Yet amidst this open life, there was one secret Eunice held close. No one ever saw the inside of her apartment. She lived alone, having never married or had children. Her family, few who remained, lived states away and had not visited the apartment in over 25 years. Anytime someone would broach the topic of her apartment, she would deflect, her usual warmth replaced with a firmness that signaled the conversation was over. Even the apartment's landlord, Mr. Peterson, who lived on the ground floor, was in the dark. He had not been inside Eunice's apartment since she moved in. He had offered several times to fix a leaky faucet or a squeaky door, but Eunice always declined, assuring him she could handle any minor repairs. As the years went on, the mystery of Eunice's apartment grew. The other tenants, while respectful of her privacy, couldn't help but speculate. What could be in there? The mysterious smell emanating from Eunice's apartment stirred speculation among the building's residents. Mrs. Rodriguez, a friendly neighbor, became concerned when she detected an unusual odor one evening. Unable to reach Eunice, she alerted the landlord, Mr. Peterson, and together they attempted to enter the apartment. However, their efforts were thwarted by a chain on the door. As they tried to investigate further, Eunice abruptly intervened, demanding privacy and shunning their assistance. Despite their intrusion, Mrs. Rodriguez remained worried about Eunice's well-being. Unable to shake her concern, she took a risky step by accessing Eunice's medical records to find an emergency contact. Surprisingly, the listed contact was unfamiliar to her. Summoning her courage, she contacted the individual who agreed to meet her anonymously in a nearby park to discuss Eunice's situation further. His face displayed a mix of anxiety and relief as he introduced himself as John, revealing that he had known Eunice his entire life due to his mother's friendship with her. Taking on the role of her emergency contact after his mother's passing, John felt obligated to care for Eunice, despite her stubbornness and his own academic commitments. Concerned about the peculiar smell described by Mrs. Rodriguez, John expressed gratitude for her concern and pledged to take immediate action. Together, they decided to confront Eunice, hoping that John's presence would facilitate their entry into her apartment. As they approached, Mrs. Rodriguez felt a knot of apprehension in her stomach, unsure of what they would find behind the door. With determination, they knocked, but received no response, prompting John to make the decision to break into the apartment. Despite Mrs. Rodriguez's objections, they explored other options, eventually enlisting the help of a neighbor named Mr. Bernard, whose apartment shared a wall with Eunice's. John climbed out of Mr. Bernard's kitchen window and began to shimmy across the narrow ledge outside of the building. Mrs. Rodriguez watched him nervously from the ground, praying for his safety. Despite the danger, John was determined to reach Eunice's apartment. His hands trembled as he reached for the open window from her apartment, his heart pounding in his chest. Finally, he made it. With a sigh of relief, John pulled himself through the window and landed inside Eunice's apartment. The smell was stronger here, a sickly sweet odor that made him gag. But he pushed down his revulsion and stepped further into the apartment. It was time to find out what was happening. When John entered the apartment safely, Mrs. Rodriguez rushed upstairs. She waited by the door eagerly and nervously until John was ready to open the door from the inside. He already knew what was hidden inside and knew the depths of this mystery, but I'm still very much in the dark. 
What could he have found in there? Mrs. Rodriguez asked herself. Nervously, she moved her fingers as she waited, and then the door slowly opened up. The door creaked and cracked, but when it was fully opened, Mrs. Rodriguez saw her accomplice John standing in the opening. He invited her in with a serious look on his face. She stepped inside and was ready to discover everything with John. Eunice's apartment was a sight to behold. It was like stepping into a different world. The walls were lined with bookshelves filled to the brim. Pictures and mementos from a time long past were scattered everywhere. The furniture was antique and well-maintained, a testament to Eunice's appreciation for the old world charm. But amidst the clutter, there was a sense of organization. The apartment was eerily silent. As John moved deeper, he called out Eunice's name again. But the only response he received was his echo bouncing off the cluttered walls. The further they went, the stronger the smell became. And then they saw it. A door, slightly ajar, from where the smell seemed to be emanating. The layout of these apartments were all the same, so Mrs. Rodriguez knew that there was a small 10 by 10 feet room behind it, just like it was in her home. But just before opening, they heard a sound behind them. They both turned around, their hearts pounding in their chests. There, standing in the entrance, was Eunice. Her eyes, usually filled with kindness, were wide with fear and anger. A bag of groceries lay at her feet, the items scattered across the floor. Her voice echoed around the apartment. What are you doing in my house? She shouted, looking at them with a mixture of confusion and anger. Mrs. Rodriguez stepped forward. Her voice was shaky, but she managed to find the words. She explained that they were worried about her, that the smell from her apartment had become unbearable. She told her about John and how he had agreed to help. Eunice's eyes softened at the sight of John. She rushed towards him, her arms wrapping around him in a tight hug. It's so good seeing you again, my boy, she said, her voice choked with emotion. Wiping away tears, Eunice agreed to show them what was behind the door. Her hands were shaking as she turned the knob and pushed it open. The smell hit them instantly, the musty odor of old papers and dampness. Mrs. Rodriguez and John stepped in, their eyes widening at the sight before them. The room was filled with boxes piled one on top of the other. As they began to open them, they found that each box was filled with letters, photographs, and mementos from a bygone era. There were letters from soldiers written during World War II, faded black and white photos of people they didn't recognize, and old trinkets that were probably valuable antiques now. Each box was like a time capsule, preserving a moment in history. Among the pictures, one stood out. A handsome young man in a military uniform, his smile bright, his eyes full of hope and dreams. His picture was framed, a solitary poppy pressed beside it. Eunice pointed to it, her eyes welling up with tears. That's my Daniel, she said, her voice choked with emotion. My brother. Daniel, Eunice revealed, had been drafted into the war. He was her younger brother, full of life and dreams. But the war had claimed him, as it had so many others. He died a hero, they told her, but that was little consolation. Daniel was not just a name on a war memorial, he was her little brother, her best friend, and he was gone. The scent that Mrs. Rodriguez had detected was Eunice's attempt to keep Daniel's memory alive. Eunice had been collecting artifacts from the war, items that Daniel had touched and had used. She kept them in the room, preserving them, creating an olfactory memory of her brother. She even had his unwashed uniform from all those years back. It even had the horrific spoils of war still on them. Over the years, as the items decayed, the smell became stronger, permeating the apartment. Their discovery was a painful reminder of the brutal reality of war. Each artifact in the room, each memento, was a testament to a life cut short, to dreams unfulfilled, to a sister's undying love. Eunice's secret was not just heartbreaking, but a stark reminder of the cost of war. Each trinket was tied to a memory, a story that Eunice had held on to for all these years. Mrs. Rodriguez took Eunice's hand, tears streaming down her own face. Eunice, she said softly, you've kept all these memories locked away. You honor your brother, and that is amazing, but also sad. Maybe he should not be locked away decaying in a room by himself. I have an idea. Maybe it's time you shared him with the world, Mrs. Rodriguez said. Your home should not be a place to preserve memories that could seriously harm your health. The decaying smell is not good for you. 
but I understand that you would like to preserve his memory. She then decided to propose something to Mrs. Eunice, and that proposal brought a smile to her face. Eunice smiled through her tears. Perhaps Mrs. Rodriguez was right. Perhaps it was time to let go of the past to share her stories with the world. Perhaps it was time to let someone else into her apartment, her life, her memories. As she looked around the room, Eunice felt a sense of relief. She had been keeping these memories bottled up for far too long. It was time to move forward. In the end, they gave the artifacts to the local museum, a place where professionals stored war memorabilia. Her brother got his own exhibit. Here, Eunice could now still honor her brother, a place where he could remain forever and be a true public part of history. Eunice was happy now, and her apartment became a welcoming place for all once again. If this story touched you as much as it did us, you should watch this video. Infertile man visits orphanage and hears, Daddy, you're here. Then discovers he's been living a lie. Click here to get the full story.